not just kill me, they would torture me first and then they would kill me. But Facebook gave me help. I received a message on Facebook, someone says to me, I want help. Mohammed Al Samawi shouldn't be here in New York City. Not long ago, he was trapped inside his tiny bathroom in the middle of the Yemeni civil war, waiting to die. But instead of dying in his bathroom, he's meeting us today in Brooklyn at a Yemeni restaurant because social media got him here. Have you had Yemeni food before? It's the best. You love it. You love it. You, you come here every day. <laughs> now, his incredible story of salvation is inspiring the world. His new book, The Fox Hunt, was just released, and it's already being adapted into a major movie by the producer of La La Land. Muhammad grew up a devout Muslim in Yemen. He was raised to believe that Jews and Christians are the enemies. So it's pretty remarkable he's at a lunch table in New York with a Jew and a Christian. Oh my God, my enemy! <laughs> Muhammad's story is powerful. So we needed to hear it over his favorite Yemeni lunch. So this is uh, maluja, and this is pasta, and this is maluja. This is lamb and rice. We call it honey in the Yemen. It's extremely flavorful. Yeah. Mom makes that. Mom makes that every day. When he was 23 years old, Muhammad became friends with his English teacher, a white guy from the UK who was different from anyone he'd ever met. So I tried to convert him to Islam. And then I gave him the Quran. He gave me the Bible. So that's how. Our friendship started when he gave me the Bible. I was reading from the book, it was amazing. It was so similar to the Quran. And the more that I was reading the book, the more that I was thinking, like, why we hate each other? Why there is a conflict? Why there is all this killing in each other? Muhammad had questions, but he had never even met a Jew to talk to. So I had to ask a Jew. And I couldn't find a Jew. So in order to find a Jew, I discovered something called Facebook. He met Jews and Christians and a community of interfaith peace activists from around the world. And I found really the, the purpose of my life. But when the Yemeni civil war broke out in 2015, his progressive views made him a target for both sides of extremist groups, including Al-Qaeda. So I was in the middle of these two extreme groups that are fighting each other. I didn't know what to do. I called friends, family, nobody was able to do that. I was hiding in a small bathroom and thinking like, you know, should I kill myself? Because, you know, if Al-Qaeda, for example, would catch you or part an extreme group, they will not just kill you, you know, they torture you and then they kill you. But the last one was me, it's just crazy. It's the last thing you do, like, before you being killed or before, like, you, 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 you would fight anything that you can do. So I was sending to everyone, like, just please help. At first, there was silence. Others offered prayers. But amazingly, he also got responses from interfaith acquaintances he barely knew. Like Daniel, who was at a Jewish wedding in Brooklyn when he got Muhammad's message. Or Natasha, at the Seder table for the first night of Passover in Israel. Justin, who was skiing in Utah, and Megan, an American living in Israel. These were the very people Muhammad had been raised to fear. It gives me hope of life. When they say yes, we want to help you out, it gives me the reason that I want to continue doing what I'm doing, like, you know, to survive. Over email, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Skype, these four ordinary people with no experience in international politics leveraged every contact they had, calling embassies, governments, anyone who would listen, to devise a plan to save Muhammad. It took 13 long days, but ultimately, Muhammad was safely on a boat to Djibouti. They did an amazing job. They, they never slept. When I was hearing airstrikes or gun shooting, I was really afraid. I couldn't communicate with them. And every time, less than a minute, they respond to me. These people who helped me out, you know, they didn't have the power or the money or they're not working in the government or anything like that. They're like me, like you. They just spend time to help me. Muhammad has always believed in connecting over our similarities rather than fighting over our differences. That's what got him here. People are good, really. Even, even, even the people who are trying to kill me, even the people who hate me, I really feel that it is because of ignorance. Because they really didn't learn. Anything. I really feel that we are good. And even though social media is in a lot of hot water these days, remember that the very first thing it did was connect us. You can just open the internet, you can just open Facebook and search for people and discover things. If I didn't have social media, if I didn't have Facebook, um, I would not be, be here today with you. I'm Muhammad Samawi, the author of The Fox Hunt. Rally on! If you like the music in this video, we found it using Soundstripe, a library of royalty-free music. They literally save us hours on every video because they make it so easy to find the perfect music for any mood and you don't have to deal with any of that copyright stuff. So if you're a creator, go check them out.